We have a fantastic speaker, and I have a great intro. I have a fantastic intro. I've been uh, introducing events, or I don't know, about, about two decades now, but I have never introduced a, a speaker thus. And when she comes to the stage, you must applaud it loudly. Please would you welcome the journalist who fell off a donkey in Afghanistan, Yvonne Ridley! Muslims, it means lock all the doors and slaughter the infidels. <laughs> I spent 10 days in Afghanistan uh, with the Taliban. They thought I was an American spy. And I said, why do you think I'm an American spy? I'm English. And they said, your voice sounds very funny. And I said, we don't all speak like the Queen. I'm from Newcastle. I'm called a Geordie. So they were trying to uh, work out what the Geordie tribe was. <coughs> anyway, my husband's with me tonight. This is my debut doing a, a stand-up and I'm really nervous. I'm sweating like a Geordie in a maths test. <laughs> my, my husband's um, he's not a Geordie. Um, he's an Algerian. Are there any Algerians in the house? No, no, probably just as well. They're wonderful, wonderful people, but they only have two moods, happy and psycho. <laughs> Thankfully, I only ever see happy. But we've been married six years, and we had uh, one of those sort of Muslim ceremonies, and um, the Imam, uh, it's his duty to ask you three times if you want to get married. Now, I didn't know that, and I'm standing there, going through this religious ceremony. I'm a new Muslim, and um, I haven't been married before um, Islamically. And the Imam kept asking me, do you want to marry this man? And he got to the third question, the third time, do you want to marry this man? I thought, if he asked me okay, I would have to say, why, what have you heard about him? <laughs> But um, what I thought I would do is um, read out a poem, and um, I've ripped it off um, a guy called Danny Chivers. I was sitting listening to Radio 4, and he was, um, he was talking about uh, risk assessment. And he came out with some interesting statistics before he read his poem. I'm sure he didn't have to have a crib sheet like me. But he said, since 9-11, 70 people in the UK have been killed by terrorists. But he also pointed out that 400 have drowned in their own bathtubs, 500 in the UK have been killed by DIY. And this, per uh, this, <laughs> this poem is, um, is called Risk Assessment. It's my first poetry rendition as well, so I haven't quite got the uh, ring. <laughs> When the lights went out, I thought, oh my god, I'm not going to repeat this poem. But thankfully, I've got uh, the lights behind me. I used to like bees. I'd watch them bumbling through the leaves and come along with their good vibrations until I learned that they killed more people last year than the terrorists did. Now I write letters to the Daily Mail demanding strict border controls on the entrances to hives and random police raids on patches of lavender which makes about as much sense as our attempts at a notional national defence against a terrorist threat about as dangerous as stepping outside in the wet. Pneumonia is Britain's fifth biggest killer. I almost feel a kind of pride in our innocence and trust as we're all <coughs> taken for a ride on the paranoia bus with the bulletproof windows firmly closed and every steel door secure, glancing at the dark-skinned people outside Mount Snowden kills as many people as terrorism, so let's drag it down to Belmarsh. Hold it without trial for 42 days till it confesses to conspiring to undermine our British way of life. Whatever that is. 
More people are killed by taking the wrong pills than by terrorist attacks, which means that money that's planned for ID cards, armed guards, putting people behind bars without charge, would save more lives if spent instead on better labeled jars. You're more likely to be killed by a rare disease or win the national lottery. You're more likely to be killed by a hernia. You're more likely to be killed by your own furniture. You're more likely to be done over by your lover, to meet your end at the hand of a friend. You're more likely to commit suicide yourself than be killed by the suicide of somebody else. And stress kills thousands every year. So, an ironic twist, you're more likely to be killed by the fear of terrorism than by a terrorist. So how to explain this? Our government's obsessed, an endless war against risk, not properly assessed, for which they need broad state powers to watch you at all hours, CCTV, ID. They don't mean to intrude, but could you include an ample selection of bodily samples? Longer detention, not to mention the need to obtain evidence mysteriously from overseas. But let them explain, it doesn't count as torture if somebody elsewhere is doing it for you. Same as having your phone tapped by some information band that isn't really a scandal because civil liberties must be balanced against the need for greater security. Surely you don't really need that jury with so many new offences in store. There's bound to be one or more made just for you. Even if you only meant to create peaceful dissent against society's ills, you still find yourself on the line out in front in a new witch hunt during an open season. But it's definitely all about terror and you'd be making a brave error bordering on treason to suggest that they might want these powers for any other reason. Well, I won't be gagged or tagged and numbered, won't give my jeans or eyeballs plundered at my own expense for a defence that won't work against a threat that couldn't get much smaller. They won't get my photograph, my details, my age, so, so long as they don't log on to my Facebook page. <laughs> and when they show up for me, I won't go quietly. I'll tell them to go out and fight the real enemy. Because sex kills more people than terrorism, and so does pregnancy. So let's drop the terror co cops and swap the thought police for the sex police. I bet they'll have much better uniforms. <laughs>